Hello Bakers and welcome to Upside Down. Today we are going to be learning more about cell shading inside Unreal Engine. First, what is cell shading? Cell shading is a different method of rendering how exactly everything looks inside Unreal. It's a method that's being used for games, for example, like Borderlands, also Dragon Ball Fighter game, and as well Legend of Zelda. Now, without further ado, let's throw the intro and learn how to do a cell shader in Unreal. I have on the screen uh, Unreal, which is uh, just a fresh start of Unreal. I just created one very simple color to have uh, those two. And at the moment, everything that we see is with the regular rendering. So first thing that we're going to do is create a new material. So I'm going to right click, create a new material, and I'm going to name it MM for master material and cell shader. Then we are going to open it and now we can start working on the material. So first thing that uh, we are going to add is going to be a uh, scene texture. Scene texture is something inside Unreal which we can take as a node inside our material and after that here from the options that we have on the site we can say what exactly we would like to get from the scene, what kind of information we would like to get from the scene. So at the moment the node is sent to scene color but of course we can change it. So before uh, setting uh, our node here we will need to change one thing and this is how exactly our material works. So uh, if we scroll down here you can see that uh, at the moment it's uh, on surface which means that we have all of these parameters uh, over here and we don't really need uh, all of those for our cell shader. So I'm going to switch that from surface into post process and now you can see that uh, we have only the emissive color available. So if I, for example, say that I would like to get our diffuse color and then just to hook it into our emissive and then apply it, you will see that, uh, but what we need to do before uh, continuing is actually we need to set up a post process volume because at the moment we set it up our material to be a post process and unless we are inside of a post process inside our game, we actually won't have any effect. So uh, before continuing with uh, the material, we need to add a post process volume over here. Uh, this is done by going into volumes and from there we just need to find where exactly is uh, post process volume then we just drag it into the scene i'll uh, put it here on the side and before adding the material inside the post process we just need to scroll down and go to the section which says post process volume settings and if it that extends so we need to make it so that it affects the whole scene of course if you don't want to affect the whole scene and you would like to have some uh, sort of different uh, setups for uh, your post processes then uh, you can just scale the volume and uh, not affect it like absolutely everything but this way it will affect uh, the whole scene and now we need to add the material into our post process so here uh, we need to go one more time into our panel for uh, once we selected the post process volume and then we are going to tap into the search mat so it will be inside our rendering features and here you can see that there is a section called post process materials we just need to expand that one and then we need to add one element we need to make that it's uh, going to be a reference uh, for an asset and after that we will have the ability to select which asset it's going to be referencing so if we have our cell shader selected and then just assign it then everything uh, should be already assigned and fine so now you can see that uh, everything is just uh, still black and not much is happening and this is because we actually don't have any colors in our scene but if we open our cell shader So if we would like to get some other information, so let's say our uh, whole scene, so everything as it was uh, before, we can just go and go into post process input. So this way now the scene will look exactly as it was before because uh, there is not much changed. Now since we understand a little bit more how exactly the information for our scene texture node works, uh, let's uh, break this 
pin and move it to the side and start building the rest of the shader. First part that we are gonna do is uh, we are going to build a node that is uh, going to just take the luminosity values from our scene. We don't care for anything else at the moment. So we are going to get our post process. Uh, this is uh, the input that uh, we just created. And then we are going to desaturate this one. So we don't want any uh, information in terms of color. And I'm going to just copy and paste uh, this node one more time. And then we are going to get our diffuse color. And I'm going to desaturate it one more time. So we are just going to copy paste this node as well. And now what we want to do is uh, get those two nodes and divide the upper one to the lower one. So we are just going to drag from here and type divide, then connect it over here. And now if I plug this into our emissive color, you will see that uh, everything is completely white. And this is uh, actually because we don't have any diffuse colors to our assets. But uh, as you can see, we have now the shadows over here. So this means that uh, the shader and everything works correctly. So we still have uh, our shadows, uh, but of course we don't have any colors because our assets, they just don't have any colors. Now we're going to build the logic of uh, all the cells of, of all the different values that we are going to have for our cell shader. So this is something which uh, it depends, of course, uh, directly on you how many different steps you would like to have for your cell shader. And uh, the more nodes, like we are just going to create one logic, but the more nodes we're going to add, it's going to have uh, more steps. So the whole thing starts from our divide. So let's first break this in over here and I'm going to drag it from over here. So we will type if and if is a node inside Unreal, which uh, basically means that uh, we have a parameter uh, A and then we have a parameter B. So if the parameter A is greater than B, it will do something. If they're equal, it will do something else. And if A is lower than B, then it will do a third thing. So we have already our parameter A and now what we need to do is just get parameter B and pretty much hook the rest. So for uh, all of this, we just uh, gonna need to hook some values and uh, we are going to use parameter nodes. So after adding uh, our first parameter, uh, it's going to, we are, we just need to name it. And uh, each of these layers is going to be uh, the different value. So we will start on the top parameter. So the top one is going to be our highlights. And then going down, it's going to be more and more going towards uh, our darker parts of our cell shader and towards our shadows. So uh, this one, let's make it highlights. So now that we have uh, the highlight value, we are going to plug uh, our if A is uh, bigger than B. So this is going to be uh, our Y value for uh, the whole scene. So this one, we can just uh, set it into a static parameter because we don't really need to, uh, sorry, to constant parameter because we don't really need to uh, change it uh, after that. We will just uh, move the thresholds. And for this, we will put uh, a white color, a completely white color. So uh, one is going to be a value which is completely white, but just to kind of be sure, let's make it uh, a two so that this is like very, very white. And then we need to uh, set up the rest. So what happens if uh, E and B are equal or E is smaller than B? So what we're going to grab is one more time our diffuse. So we are getting this one and then we are going to multiply it. We are going to multiply the color and I'm going to grab one more parameter. So uh, it's going to be highlights and then this is going to be our tint and the tint is going to go into B and this is going to be if our uh, A is smaller than B. And let's just to be sure put that one, let's say four, uh, just to be kind of on the safe side. Now, uh, as many layers, as I mentioned, as we would like to have, uh, we need to copy and paste pre pretty much the same logic. So we just grab this and paste it, let's say I'm going to do this four times. So this means that our cell shader will have four steps. Now we need to uh, connect our divide into all the A's, like this. 
and then the result from each one we start from the top one and go down so the result for each one we are just going to put it if a is smaller than b so we are going to delete that node since we don't need it and here and over here and now the last one we will go into our emissive color and we apply save so as you can see now we have a very uh kind of cartoony already uh, looking scene but uh, as you remember in the very beginning I have a very very simple material which is just set it up with color so I'm just going to create a material instance of that one so that we have a couple of different uh, color variations in the scene and we can better represent what exactly is happening so this is going to be material instance and this is going to be color one so color one i'm just going to leave it uh, as it is and then i'm just going to create color two so we will change it so this one let's say it's a blue one so we can give for example uh, here a blue color and then let's make one more uh, so I'm just going to give it a red color okay so now we have uh, our colors and uh, what we need to do is uh, create a material instance for our cell shader so I'm just going to make MI for material instance and then cell uh, shader one Let's replace inside our post-process volume so that we use the material instance. And we did this just so that uh, it's a little bit easier for us to control all the parameters. Uh, so there's one thing that uh, I see that uh, I missed to do and at the moment we just have the highlights one. So uh, I didn't rename the rest. So I'll just quickly go back and rename uh, all the other elements. So this one is going to be highlights two. So we have uh, our highlights two, and then we have the highlights to tint. Then this is going to be highlights three and the highlights three tint and the last one highlights four and highlights four tint i'm just going to apply save it and now if i go back to my material instance you can see that uh, we will have all of these uh, parameters available just gonna check out all of those so that we can uh, edit all the values and now it's a matter of tweaking the values in your scene so that uh, you get the looks that uh, you would like to get so let's start by moving uh, for example this one let's leave it on one but uh, the second one let's leave it to something like that so as you can see we can we start getting like different uh, areas that uh, we have so for example this one uh, maybe it's not uh, highlights but uh, I should have named it uh, shadows it was going to be a little bit more understandable and the middle one was going to be neutral but uh, you get what uh, exactly we want to do here so at the moment we uh, have uh, like already this uh, cell shading effect so uh, I'm again saying that if we would like to have more layers and more depth into it we can always add more of those nodes and then of course we will have uh, this effect uh, much stronger and with a lot more things so uh, there is one more thing that uh, I would like to talk about and this is uh, about lights so at the moment we just have our directional light into the scene which uh, uh, is by default but for example if I get a light over here and let me just close this parameter and we would like this light to have some sort of a color so let's say we would like to have a pink light uh, as you can see that uh, nothing really happens so the light still is uh, completely white at least uh, what is being displayed over here so it doesn't matter uh, which color we get and this is because uh, in Unreal the node that uh, we just created this diffuse color 
It doesn't get uh, inside the diffuse color. It doesn't really get uh, any of the light color information. So uh, we have that in our post process, but we don't have it in the diffuse color. So there is a little bit of a workaround uh, in order for us to get the color of the lights. So I'm going to move that a little bit because we will need to add a couple of more nodes. So what we're gonna do is uh, I'm just going to get the same same texture post-processing and then we will normalize it. And after that, I'm just going to multiply that. And we are going to put a multiplier uh, node over here. So this one, I'm just going to name uh, lights control. And uh, I'm going to put, uh, again, some default value. I'm going to put it into B. And the only thing that's uh, left to do over here, I'm just going to move it down. Before multiplying it, we would like to remove the color from here because we will get the color from our note on the bottom. So I'm just going to first uh, desaturate it and then uh, multiply it and we take this into B, and now we can get this into our emissive color. Apply, save it, go to our demo. And now you can see that uh, we started getting a little bit of the color, but uh, again, uh, there is like this very bright spot. So this can be two things, uh, either we need to play a little bit more with our highlights so we can remove uh, that. Uh, or uh, let's uh, see what exactly our uh, lights control that we just put uh, is doing. So uh, by default, it's uh, on one and you can see that uh, the scene became a little bit, not a little bit, but uh, quite a lot darker. And this means that uh, there is like some post-processing uh, going on. But if I increase this, we get it like brighter and brighter. So this is again one more parameter that uh, we need to set up the way that we would like to set up in uh, our final scene and uh, then play with the rest of uh, the parameters. So we get a final result as we would like uh, it to look like. So thank you for joining me in today's tutorial. I hope that this was useful and helpful for your project. If you have more questions, please leave a comment down below, subscribe and see you next time.